Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video in the series of DevOps real-time interviews. Now, we have a profile with us today. So this person is around six years of experience in IT and he started his career as a systems engineer. Later, he turned to DevOps and cloud and has close to one or two years of experience in DevOps and cloud. All right. So uh, in this interview, I have concentrated only on Jenkins as always that this interview is an excerpt of a larger part and this interview will be around 15 to 20 minutes of interview solely on Jenkins. All right. So the questions would be easy to medium range because the person does not have a lot of experience. So as per one of one or two years of experience, I've asked the questions. So if you're watching this video on any social media like a YouTube short, Instagram, Twitter or Telegram, make sure to check out the pinned comment or in the description section for the main video. All right. So uh, that would be it. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, I'll start then from uh, Jenkins since you have uh, worked on it, right? So, um, can you explain me a difference between a freestyle project and a pipelines in Jenkins? Uh, freestyle project, you are mm, defining your uh, variables, your rules. Uh, it's free, but in pipelines, you need to connect to, uh, let's say, to code version GitHub, uh, GitHub or Bitbucket. So can you give me an example of it? Example of uh, pipeline? Yeah. You need to create a Jenkins file in, let's say, in a GitHub, GitLab or Bitbucket and uh, connect this uh, code version to Jenkins. Every time when there is push uh, to this uh, branch, uh, Jenkins file um, triggering. Okay. <coughs> okay, okay. So uh, when it comes to uh, securing the sensitive information uh, like passwords or some sort of secret, how do you uh, protect that in Jenkins? In Jenkins, uh, there is actually multiple ways you can uh, encrypt. If you are using AWS, you can encrypt with AWS uh, keys. If you, you can use Helm uh, secrets, also you can use uh, Vault let's say Azure Vault. Mm -hmm. There is multiple ways actually. Uh, last time we used the AWS uh, secret case. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have any idea about the credential plugin that we have in Jenkins? Ah, also yes, credential plugin. Yes, exactly. Okay. So basically when we have this uh, credential plugin, we can store the sensitive information. <laughs> Uh, yes, can, exactly. Yes. Hmm, you can create a username, password, uh, or secret text credential. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we were talking about the uh, Jenkins file which you uh, which you told me. So uh, what is the basic purpose of a Jenkins file, and why is it used? Uh, in Jenkins file, you need to define um, uh, steps, uh, build, test, uh, deploy steps. You need to define this and uh, when uh, this Jenkins file triggering, uh, it's step-by-step uh, step, uh, doing execution tasks. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, if we want to uh, distribute uh, Jenkins uh, pipeline execution to multiple agents, how would you do that? Multiple agents? Yeah. I mean, how can you distribute a Jenkins pipeline execution to multiple agents? Uh, this part, I mm, I never met, so I never set up this in Jenkins. Okay, so uh, I'll just walk you through. So Jenkins mm -hmm. pipeline can be executed on multiple agents uh, when you, you, mm -hmm. can, you can use node block uh, in Jenkins file. So within mm -hmm. this block, uh, you can specify which agent label to use for execution. So this will ah. enable sort of a parallel execution of stages across multiple agents. This actually um, improves the uh, build efficiency. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so like with respect to the previous question, uh, what do you understand by agent? And can you explain me the concept of it? Agent is Jenkins agent running on the endpoint and it's actually executing the task 
define it on Jenkins file. Okay, so uh, this agent, um, can I create this agent on my local, um, I mean, so let's start from the uh, uh, first thing. You install Jenkins in some system, right? Uh, it could be a local system, it could be a VM, it could be a Docker container, it could be anything, okay? So, uh, can I create the same machine which I have uh, as a local host, uh, can I create that as an agent as well in which I have installed Jenkins? Is that possible? Actually, yes, it's possible, but not recommended. So what? So is better let's let's say you install Jenkins in somewhere and install agent separate somewhere uh, another place. This is for security reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm. So when it comes to uh, parameterizing of any Jenkins pipeline or Jenkins job, how you can do that? Uh, priority. Parameterizing, parameter. Parameter. Um, not sure. I can answer this question. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll just uh, help you out. Uh, mm -hmm. So when we talk about the pipelines in the Jenkins job, you can parameterize them by defining parameters in the job configuration, or you can do that in Jenkins file as well. It can be of mm -hmm. uh, various types. You can use strings. You can use boolean. I mean multiple things. Uh, this will allow you to provide input when you trigger the build or any process this this will make process more customizable flexible in nature so that's that's the purpose mm -hmm. okay so uh, in the project that you were working on uh, were you using some sort of artifactory or how you were uh, archiving the artifacts artifacts uh, um Artifacts uh, in Jenkins, you mean? Yeah. I'm not sure I have faced this in Jenkins. So let me explain you what I did in Jenkins. Mm -hmm. I was connecting Jenkins to the code version, let's say uh, with packet. Uh, creating Jenkins file, uh, mentioning tasks, and when there is trigger, uh, Jenkins file was uh, triggering, Jenkins was executing tasks. So this is what uh, I was doing. But artifacts, actually, I don't remember. Okay. Um, so the project that you were working on was on what language? I mean, was it written on Java, Python, C Sharp or any other language? Uh, Python and Go. Okay, so do they produce any kind of artifact? What happens? Uh, what happens when they compile or build? How do you build them? Uh, build uh, only Docker file. Sorry? Docker files. Okay, you were building only Docker files. Yes. So where were you keeping them? In the repository. Repository, you mean GitHub or something else? Yes, with bucket. Uh, Docker file in the bit bucket. Mm -hmm. When uh, when the pipeline was triggering, mm -hmm. uh, was building from this Docker file. Okay. Is there any specific reason you po uh, kept it over in the repository and not some place like uh, an S3 bucket or uh, or Artifactory or Docker Hub? Why the repository? Because uh, code in the repository. So in Docker file also same folder. When you're building something, it uh, should be in same folder. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Um, have you ever come across uh, what exactly is a Jenkins uh, shared library? Jenkins shared library, uh, shared, uh, shared library. I didn't use. Okay. I'll just give you a brief idea of it. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, when you uh, want to do something as like reusing the code, so Jenkins shared library is is a way of uh, defining reusable code that can be used across multiple pipelines. Uh, it basically allows you to abstract common code from the functions or classes. This will promote the code re reuse or uh, consistency maintainability in your Jenkins pipeline. It's, it's the ba basic mm -hmm. idea of how it done. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a process for it, but it's just a very brief idea of how this works. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, have you ever uh, implemented any uh, parallel stage in, in any Jenkins pipeline? Parallel stage? Yes. 
parallel stage, uh, you mean in, inside one pipeline? Yes. No, uh, there was no parallel stage, no, wasn't. Okay, I mean, just by the name of it, can you uh, think about anything what it could mean? I'm, 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 uh, I, I think that uh, you have not worked on it, but uh, just from the guess, uh, how, how, what it should be? Can you, can you guess? Parallel stage, uh, I think, uh, at the same time, too, uh, executing tasks. Yes, executing tasks. Yes. Okay. I mean, parallel at the same time. Yes. Yes. So, uh, be, but why to do this? Uh -huh. So that's that's the thing. So uh, when you implement parallel stages in Jenkins pipeline, uh, I think there is a keyword for that. Uh, you call it parallel block. So there is a separate mm -hmm. block. So you can uh, define multiple stages and this will be executed in parallel. Now, when you ask, uh, why do we need this? This will improve the efficiency. How? Let's say uh, if you have uh, three code bases to be compiled, one could be in Java, one could be uh, using npm one could be using another thing so you don't want one by one compilation you can create three artifacts and make a single artifact in the next step and this will save a lot of time so that's why generally people use parallel this is just an example of it there could be other mm -hmm. reasons as well no understood okay okay uh so when we talk about jenkins file there is an agent directive there is a keyword mm -hmm. uh what is the purpose of that uh, to execute uh, tasks on specific agent. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Mm. Um, so there is something known as a uh, pipeline as a code. Uh, have you heard about it? And why is it important? Pipeline execute. Pipeline as a code. Pipeline as a code. Yes. No. I know <coughs> infrastructure as a code pipeline, no. Okay. So uh, I think you have already done it. It's just uh, a naming convention. So it refers to mostly defining pipelines using code, mm -hmm. like the Jenkins file, uh, rather than through web UI. I mean, if you go to the web UI, you can click, click, click and create stuff for the execution. But when it comes to Jenkins file, it it is said as pipeline as a code. It's important because um, it provides version control, collaboration, and repeatability kind of a thing. So that's that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, whenever you were creating uh, the declarative pipeline and the scripted pipelines in Jenkins, can you explain me the difference between both of them? Between between what? Uh, declarative and scripted pipelines. Uh, declarative. Uh... No, I think I can't because uh, scripted it's uh, most used and I, I use the scripted one, but declarative no. I don't know. Okay, and how you were doing it, the scripted ones? Scripted ones, uh, you create a Jenkins file, mention the uh, stages and scripts and command. Mm -hmm. What what this pipeline should do? Okay. Um, have you ever uh, implemented? Any Jenkins pipeline through a webhook or triggered it? Via webhook, no. Only via uh, branch push. Okay. Uh, you haven't uh, used it? No, no. Webhook not used. Okay. So, uh, how do you handle this uh, build failures in Jenkins pipeline and how do you troubleshoot it? What is the right uh, the procedure that you have followed or one should follow? Uh, I have followed the uh, um, in Jenkins file, if you are going to uh, job, mm -hmm. you are clicking to console, mm -hmm. and in console you see all the output of uh, Jenkins file execution and where it's stuck. And uh, just after this troubleshooting, try to find uh, why it stopped here, what happened. Let's say I used SonarCube mm -hmm. to check quality of code. Most time it's uh, stuck there. So, like this. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, what was this uh, sonar cube uh, doing in that? I mean, why was uh, this step was there? Sonar cube was uh, checking quality of code. 
okay okay and uh, how does it check sometime yes uh, let's say in python most time it's uh, sonar cube stops in sonar cube so now it was executing uh, check uh, code quality mm-hmm. and uh, if uh, there is any issues in the code it's stopping executing so developer back end developer uh, should fix this and rerun uh, test again okay okay so uh, who did the setup uh, you or someone someone else so my cube yes setup i mean Me. uh, uh, connecting clubbing it with the pipeline who did this Uh, me, I just installed Jenkins uh, Sonar Cube pi- uh, plugin and added this uh, to Jenkins. Okay, so when we say uh, code quality, uh, there is something known as code coverage in Sonar Cube. What do you mean by that? Uh, code coverage, not sure. Okay. I'm okay. Not sure. Okay. Uh, okay. So this would be last question on Jenkins. Um, explain me the concept of blue green deployment. and how you can achieve this with uh, jenkins blue green blue green deployment is yes. mm, not sure okay so uh, basically blue green deployment is uh, a technique for uh, deployment uh, in which you have two identical environments blue and green okay mm-hmm. so uh, you have an active environment that serves a production traffic so if you have something for production one will always be the active one while the inactive one is updated with the new changes so if you have a and b a is having production traffic b is something that is getting uh, updated so jenkins can automate this process by orchestrating uh, switching of traffic between these two environments a and b this will mm-hmm. ensure minimal downtime and easy rollback if if there is any issue so that's that's the concept of uh, blue green deployment oh, okay okay Understood.